Okay, maybe we can even get started because I don't know how many, maybe a couple more people might join in the next minute or so, but I was just following another forum that Gautam was uh, on with some food poisoning. But, uh, oh, food poisoning. Oh, no. It's not good there. It's oh, man. It anybody else. Would be. So maybe we can a minute early usually I will tell why after, but uh, FYI speed may also be early, but I'm like today, so. Sorry, Srinivas, I'm having a lot of trouble hearing you. Oh, you sound, okay. You sound very quiet. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. You hear me better now? Yep. Yep. Uh, okay. So, yeah, I have my earphone kind of a little bit off. So, okay. No, I was saying Mehul said he needed to take off around 11 today. So, all right. Well, it's only six here. So, five, five hours. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he can <clears throat> leave 11, what is it now, British Standard Time or British Daylight Time now? Or... Here in the UK? Yeah. yeah it's British Summer Time, whatever that is. I think it's like uh, an hour yeah. an hour ahead of GMT, something like that. Uh, okay. I'm never sure. But... So um, let me share, uh, since I think you guys were submitting, whereas I was still mostly doing EDA on a bunch of stuff last week. So let me just share quickly the results of what I got, because that pointed in some directions that I wanted to kind of share and get your take on. So I'll keep it really um, brief. Let me know whether you can see my screen. Uh, yep. Yeah. Okay. So I did, I mean, this is again from a couple of other notebooks that existed, but um, I, I did a couple of things. So essentially, what I did was created one massive uh, data frame which has a bunch of information on the patients and the scans. So if you see, what I did was count the number of slices for each of the four types of uh, scans. That's what the count means. Uh, and you can see in some cases, it's very small. Yeah. And I'll show that a little bit later too, because I didn't mean a max of this. The other thing that I did, which you can also, I think one guy, Roberts or whatever, had done this, but um, figured out the plane for each of the types of scans and the size of the images for each of the scan types too. Where do you get the plane from? Does that just come out of the DICOM metadata? Yes. Right. The rows and the columns. So I got all that um, put down and then, you know, uh, you can see that the min and the max of slices. And you can see in some cases how small number of slices are. You see on some patients, for example, there are only 15 slices. Right, for flare. And some patients have as many as 514. And then the min, I was kind of surprised is I would, Thing fairly low, right? Uh, May hold 15 to 20 slices. Oh, um, so that was mute. Uh, yeah, that was, yeah, that is really less. Um, maybe because there are some clinical scanners and they, they, they're just not good enough scanners. So they, they just have, like, yeah, it's just basically the voxel size. You know, if you put the voxel size, it'll be like the biggest voxel size size with the smallest number of slices, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I can build that too. Then <clears throat> the width and the um, height, Yeah. right, um, of the images, I mean, just the min and the max values. And yeah. I'll show you in a different notebook that I ran that, you know, there's 
this thing varies tremendously right. uh, yeah. not thankfully as mail said i believe i haven't confirmed it but i believe that within a scan type i don't think it varies or yeah. i should say within a patient it doesn't vary but i believe that it varies patient to patient and like there's like a dozen in some cases different sizes right and the height is uh, the height varies a lot less although it also has as you can see you know uh-huh. you can see that even right here there are number of variations um and then the planes are obviously these three yeah but mm-hmm. i also did the calculation if you will or printed out like how many of each type for each yeah uh, or mm-hmm. how many of each axis for each scan type okay right meaning if you have flares then you can see that axial is the most common followed by coronal and then 29 sagittal mm-hmm. um and then did similar things for the other um scan types as well mm-hmm. and the reason i did all this was i know at least um one of the things that i was wondering and would like your and the thoughts around this is i was thinking yes we have only 585 so that itself is a low number but that said i still was thinking that if we build a classifier that we probably ought to build it per plane type for even a patient per scan type you know what i'm saying because and i maybe pick pick one maybe just pick the top two of the plane type and build different models for then in this case maybe build only axial but in this case maybe build axial and coronal but forget about the sagittal but build it per because otherwise i was wondering and this is where i wanted some comment or thoughts in the case you know i it would imagine that if you are just building even a 3d model but the thing is in for the same scan type but you are giving it completely different plane i am skeptical that the same thing would learn you know something which you give coronal and something else which give you axial and it would be able to pick up the right stuff yeah i would yeah. think that it probably would be helped if we could focus on those each of these and separately i mean right. yeah yeah i was thinking no that that that's a, that's a really important point yeah you know like d- different planes will matter uh, but i was thinking to convert uh, everything to axial and um, have have a pre processing step so some and someone just released a notebook um Uh, for the conversions may- maybe a few hours ago or yesterday um and uh, mm. they b- basically because that information yeah so uh, because uh, you know like your original idea like like you know the, the idea we discussed last time was like uh, we, we, i think we should have like four models for for the four types so flare t2 t1 right? right and then if if you have per plane i'm i'm not sure maybe maybe it might help in training but um we because we can always convert anything to axial you know and we, uh, i was yeah, thinking yeah that's something uh, so you would take it to nifty or numpy whatever and then kind of like do this matrix multiplication kind of thing you were talking about yeah even bef- even like the the notebook that was shared they didn't even convert to nifty they they just did it like with numpy arrays Uh, so mm. you you just read the dicom and we so we don't even have to do the nifty step just uh, before before feeding it into the uh, like training we we just make okay set the head, so head either, either way you the point is one way or the other you think it should all be the same plane yeah. otherwise it's not very useful to learn that that you agree it's just a question of yeah. okay one way to do it is to get it done using uh the underlying number array and then appropriate matrix multiplication to convert yeah. things 
if you convert it if you convert it do you end up with a different resolution like if you've got whatever that is there i don't know, say 500 axials and you've only got like five coronal and you convert the coronal to axial do they not end up with yeah like there'll be an axial view but it'll not be a completely different resolution than the other 500 um it might uh yeah it, it might be different um yeah we'll we'll ha um so so normally like the uh, yeah it, it could be different because i don't know like uh, in the axials the x and y is normally pretty small like the x and y will be one millimeter one millimeter and the z will be like three or four yeah but coronal what will coronal be i don't know actually I'm I'm thinking if even if it, even if it's coronal, you know, like your hmm. yeah, no, I, I, no, I have to check that uh, coronal. If it's I don't know That's if it's still the X and Y. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, that how does the translation impact yeah. the um, because you have varying number of slices and thickness and. Uh, does your translation um, get yeah. you uh, to similar dimensions? Right. Um, yeah, I just thought of one more thing. I think I saw one, but that was segmentation. I saw somebody doing like a segmentation in axial, coronal, and sagittal separately. And then combining those three, so here it, like I mean, so the, the if you go all out, right, you could have like four models for the four types, and then three models for the three planes. So that's twelve models. Right. But yeah, but uh, yeah, so I, I don't know which. But yeah, that's, that, that's that's where these counts I was thinking could help mm -hmm. because then you can focus on which yeah. ones really have enough of a number to kind of have some confidence. I was uh, listening to something and even like like in, in that in your second T1 weighted like coronal is only five. Um, I saw some stuff with like yeah. people doing GANs, you know, like and just generating trading data. <laughs> <laughs> like with a variational auto encoder and like, uh, yeah. but be because everybody is like talking about GAN, GAN in medical imaging, but it's, it's, it's very hard for medical imaging because I mean, the only application I could think of was like data augmentation, but I, I just, that, that, that would be. Uh, yeah, I, actually, I mean, GANs is further out. In fact, we are just about to step into the latent variable models in our Sunday thing on unsupervised learning. So, oh, okay. Have to, you know, okay. Uh, like the part. Uh, oh, maybe tomorrow, um, second half, we we'll get to that. But yeah, we don't need GANs even. We could, you know, there is variations on latent. Variable models yeah. that, but the thing that That's concerns it. me about going that route, anything with medical is, yeah, that assumes a lot of stuff that mm -hmm. I'm, you know, kind of concerned about. Because even in this case, for example, just since I spent some time on it, I thought it is a, it's a useful thing to bring up, um, um, which is, you know, Jeremy has a series of posts, mm. not in this with respect to this competition but in general about medical like yeah. related data using fast ai but one of the things that he mentions there which i thought was insightful uh, there are many other insightful things but this stuck out uh, for me i would encourage you guys to go through the notebooks even if not the details just the points he makes um one point he makes which is very uh, resonated with me is he says like don't think like a radiologist uh, tongue in cheek but his point is that, you know, for and I saw that even in this case, that same Robert guy who had done some of this, especially the planes thing, um, he also does a contrasting increase, right, on the image. And that's where, for example, Jeremy says that, wait a minute, you know, something, he doesn't exactly talk with, about contrasting, but he's talking about some image enhancement that people do before they view this. Right, that radiologists do. And he's saying, don't do that if at the end of the day, you're using CNNs and 3D CNNs to evaluate what you're doing, because 
they don't need the contrast that humans need to judge stuff. You see what I, so his point is do things which matter to the method that you're using. Don't kind of put contrast. If contrast is not what the CNNs and the 3D CNNs would uh, care about in picking up the either the cancerous part or whatever. You see what he's saying? Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Right. That is, you know, you do contrast because it's helpful to the human eye. Mm -hmm. But the human eye is not what the machine learning algorithm does. Right. right. Yeah. So do what helps the machine learning algorithm, not what will help a human judge. Mm -hmm what it is. So I thought that was an interesting point because you're saying if you know increase CNN resolution, blah, 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 those things might matter, not whether your contrast is high enough. I thought that was interesting and something to keep in mind. So um, anyway, uh, so if you can post a link to that notebook you're talking about, uh, Mehul, when you get a chance of, you know, where he's converting everything to one. And I think yeah. I'd also like to uh, see that in the light of what uh, Steve is mentioning yeah. too, of how he tackles this issue. And you mentioned it too, right? Like the voxel thing would be very different for the five than for the 567, I would imagine. Yeah. It's not easy yeah, to print it's not easy to print it now, right? No, it's no. It's, 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 yeah, we'll have to look at the. We have to get it from the DICOM. I, you you got this information from the CSV, right? Like this, uh, or you made it like yeah. you read. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I I mean, I generated this, and by the way, I think I can point to and you know the, because this notebook and pieces of it are all public anyway. So I don't okay. think I'll be violating any of my head. Just not with any guy. But it basically is just finding out all this data and sticking it all in one yeah. no, file for it yeah. easy to scan everything in one place and just manipulate it and figure things out in one from one. Uh, and let me know if I switch and you can still see this. Can you still see yeah. yep. my uh, okay? Um, this is the other thing, and then I'll. Yeah. Sorry, previously there. You see were you able many... to were you able to get the information as to if the scan is axial or coronal? Is that in the CSV file? I didn't. I hadn't seen that. Yeah. Uh, oh. No, it's not. I generated all of this data. By the way. Yeah, the but how do you in the CSV... how do you work out how do you work out is it coronal or sagittal, or axial? Oh, that's something that this. I copied from this notebook that this Dave Roberts guy has, which, uh, let's see, I do this all, not here, here. Um, so what you do, um, and I got all of it from this, what he do, what he does is he gets this, um, there's a field called, the thing called uh, image orientation patient, and you read that at that index, and it's a data set. Uh, oh, sorry, that, it's a that's list. actually part of that's part of the DICOM image, then. Yeah, that's part of the metadata. Right. Yeah. And then right. you do this comparison, so it's like six values in that list, and those give the x's and the y's of the rows and the columns. And he says if you just do comparison to this then this means that coronal, this means sagittal, this means axial, and you know, there's plus or minus, he has some comments which says that this, this is a simple way, but it's good enough for our purposes, but because in this case, most are perpendicular. So using that, you can just create what type they are. Right. So he just takes one sample, by the way, uh, here, he just takes one file from the entire thing, entire slice list, and yep. then yep. gets the X and Y from it, compares it, and then figures out. And I did the same thing for the rows and columns, and so I get that too. And then 
the min max by this push process. So my base thing is this, which is the height as well as the coronal sagittal stuff, height, weight, and coronal sagittal for each of the four. And then um, in the next one, I did the min max. But what I wanted to show you in this one is you see how many image widths there are. Oh, wow. Like 25 different widths. So which is why I was interested in what, um, you know, the, obviously it means we'll need to uh, crop it to be the, you know, focused a crop and or segment it to be just focused on the image part, uh, wherever the brain is and get rid of all the non-brain stuff. And within the brain, the question is, you know, like how do you further segment by within, I mean, you know, if you're taking a, let's stick with flare for now. So on flare, if you can even chop it to just be the flare brain portion of the image, and that's another thing is, how do you crop it close to the brain image? Do you just use a fixed size or do you vary it depending on, you know, the original size of the image? Um, any thoughts there, Steve? How did you do it? Well, I do it, yeah. Like, so I get like the NumPy array from the DICOM image and then just use a bit of code that um, brings in the sides and the top and the bottom while the, the NumPy array value is zero. So like all zero rows or whatever, they get removed and all zero columns get removed from the edges. Mm -hmm. So yeah, like it just chops off, yeah, like the, the black space on the top and the bottom and the left and the right. Oh, okay. But then you would need to make the, because if you just did that, then you would end up with, still end up with varying sizes for different yes. patients, right? Yeah, so I end up, yeah, so I crop it so it just gets rid of any padding around the top and bottom and sides. And then I resize to make all the images the same size. Obviously, with that, it means that when you've got like just, I don't know, when it's not in the center of the brain, when it's like at the edge, your image is like a lot smaller. And so it gets blown up to be the same size as the middle of the brain, which means like obviously that the actual sort of the X and the Y coordinates are moving. They're not in the same position anymore. But Oh, okay. So there again, you, you your image would get... Uh, when you say blown up, then the pixels are getting interpolated? Yeah, so, yeah, like if you've only got like a, a side of the brain where it's only sort of a very small image, then like when right. that gets expanded, it obviously ends up yeah. like sort of right at the edge. But um, yeah, so that's what I'm doing at the minute. But yeah, like it, it was only a sort of a temporary, temporary stop or whatever. Right, right. No, I mean, you have to start somewhere with a simple thing. And what size did you pick for the common thing? At the minute, I'm going at 256 or whatever. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. Um, when you stop sharing your screen, I've got like a, an image of it or whatever. I can show you what it does. Yeah, sure. I'm done. So, you know, the interesting thing, I just wanted to show that weights are a huge different, but you can see that the heights are not as variant as the widths. Yeah, I'm surprised by that a little bit, but maybe it's something like for, for normally when we have these scans, we it's like 256 by the X and Y remain the same. So it's just, it's just a little surprising, but it's okay. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah, and after, yeah, Steve, after you share, I, I want to share that, that notebook about the orientation. There, there is some cropping there too. Um, okay, I'm done. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll just share mine a sec just to show you what, what, exactly what I mean. Um, yeah, so like I might have even showed this last week, but th this top picture here, if you can see it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like this is like the original. It's just one patient. Like it's all their slices of. So you can see here, so it starts small. Yes, yeah, so like that's the the. Don't know what that is. The bottom of the brain going to the top of the brain, I think it is. But like obviously you've got like yeah. all the black around. 
whereas the bottom one here it's got the it's got the uh, cropping on it um, so yeah so like in this very first picture like that little dot mm -hmm. now ends up because of the fact it's been cropped and then pulled up all to the same size um so yeah like for the for the bottom of the brain before it gets to the real thing mm -hmm. but yeah then obviously everything sort of it's maybe not in exactly the same position as it would be and so like for like a 3d scan yeah. it's probably not so good anymore um yeah but that's where though what you were saying earlier last week steve i mean if we can figure out a way to do it that would be the kind of like the ideal right which is use segmentation to figure out which of the segments has the tumor and only use those and hopefully that in the typical case happens to be somewhere in the middle and not at the end yep then yeah, it so would get rid of the end by itself that process would help uh, ameliorate the problem here yeah so you can see in, in this image here you can see like here's the tumor coming now so like it's only there for a few of the slices or whatever and like and only in like this part of the image so yeah what i'd been hoping to do was to yeah like run segmentation just to get like this bit of the image and dump all the rest um yeah so i went to look at you know like i said about the other part of this competition part one or whatever it is which is the segmentation right. bit yeah so i went and got the data for it um and it's all nifty images which i don't know much about but mm. <laughs> yeah so so here is again you got like the four different mri scans and then it does give you the mask for where the tumor is um i'll just be playing with it um mm. so yeah so like you get the images and it gives you the segmentation mm, you, nice. like you can see on here like again like there's a whatever <laughs> uh, mm. I, I get image of it so yeah it's like it's running through all the slices how, how do you make this video um image well, well, yeah basically you just write out every slice and then there's like various python libraries they stick them all together to make like an animated gif okay um so yeah like here's all the slices with the mask put on it um, oh nice. nice there's this other one here this one here makes a 3d gif which yeah. like rot rotates the whole brain but yeah. um yeah, like this is all out of some Kaggle notebook from somebody else has played about. I think it was a different competition on the brain. This okay. one here takes over like an hour to run to generate the 3D yeah. rotating brain model. So uh, I didn't mm -hmm. have enough patience to wait for an hour yeah. for that to happen. So unfortunately, I can't show you any rotating brains. Um, and then, yeah, so <laughs> these are my submissions so far. So I was just some public notebook these ones here again this is just like from a public notebook and it's like one where it's taking just three slices at, sorry yeah three of the things at random or whatever and creating like three channels and sticking them in the cnn but as you can see i'm not getting very good results at all and then these two here these were like with the image cropped and as i say i think the problem here is the fact that when i crop and resize it takes individual pixels and sort of can push them out to the edge of the of the image or whatever and so they're not in the same position that they would be in the other one so like even though i've sort of focused in on the brain i, I got worse scores so but yeah, yeah. Th these were just like sort of baseline results or whatever so right. i have a way to go but yeah so uh things are up and running now okay cool um Okay. Actually, I want to uh, um, I want to go through a couple of things about the uh, yeah, Steve. If you want any to know anything about Nifty, just just ask me anytime. Um, yeah, I work with Nifty like every day. Like um, so, we basically when we do any processing, like even with non deep learning, right? Uh, so for example, we do uh, we do three D image registration, right? Uh, between like uh, uh, say a T one and T two, for example. Uh, then we what we do is we convert the DICOM to Nifty, uh, do all the processing in Nifty, and then yeah, then for for our 
work, we have to convert it back to DICOM. But uh, I, actually, let me just share my screen and just give you, uh, uh, just show you uh, share screen. Yeah, I meant to ask you that. Like, obviously, like in this competition, mm -hmm. the images are in DICOM. And so you have, I don't know, however many slices Srinivas said is yeah. in a, a sort of typical DICOM image. Is it easy enough to take that DICOM image and sort of match it up with the, the nifty image? Because obviously, if I want to run a sort of segmentation and build a model using that other data with the nifties, then I need to somehow take the DICOM images out of the Kaggle competition and yeah, sort of get them to match. Yeah, we would have to. Um, so it's is it same people? No, it's not the same people. Right? No, it's it's different subjects, right? Um, I'm not 100% sure yet. I read somewhere okay. where it said that the um, the segmentation ones were like a subset of okay. what's in the Kaggle competition, but I'm not 100% sure on that yet. Okay, I see. Yeah, I think um, I read the same thing too, Steve, that there's some overlap. Yeah. I think maybe, maybe this, actually, let me go through this notebook. Uh, this notebook might solve a lo lot of the problems because he... He, he, you know, like, because what we want is like some sort of normalization in the space, right? Uh, so he shows, uh, he, he did two things, like he did a couple of things, like he, I don't know, he or she, whatever, whoever this is. Uh, what is this? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Um, but uh, yeah, I think, so uh, I'll, I'll go through this and then I'll just talk about the nifty. So here, uh, uh, one thing like like the same way if uh, from yeah you, you there's one uh, variable called image orientation patient and I think what Srinivas was showing right based on that DICOM tag uh, yeah okay same this David Roberts thing you you can say whether it's coronal axial sagittal okay so one uh, he has some yeah. So basically, remember I was telling you, if you want to rotate, you have to just shift the dimensions, right? Um, so in this case, you do this, uh, uh, what is he? What is, uh, okay, I need to, I, I didn't look at all the code, but maybe there's some, there's some, I don't know why there's a rotation, but we, we can figure that out exactly. Uh, why, why? Yeah, this is N. Some of the, he has a trans, so maybe he figured out how to bring it all in the same orientation. So what then, uh, like basically now, yeah, there you go. So this subject, now everybody is in, you see, everybody is in axial rotation. It, it was originally, uh, I guess originally it was coronal, and now, um, so now, now, now everything is aligned, right? And then, once you once you align it, the other dimensions also align. Right? Once you do, you, you basically like it's like a no, it's not like I was gonna say it's like a Rubik's cube, but no, no, not exactly. <laughs> okay, so he he did this, uh, so that's the alignment. He or oh, this person has a a cropping too, but the cropping is wait, what was the I didn't see the crop before. Uh, Oh, it's okay. I think it's the same similar idea. Like just add, add right. If it's uh, uh, yeah, if it's greater than zero, then keep keep or uh, remove. Uh, so once, but I think he did. I I think I want to say you would you would normalize first and then and then crop. Where is is uh, so then you you can get. Images like this, right? These are uh, oriented, reoriented, and cropped. Um, and then he just these are just some this cropping. How yeah. does he how does he crop? Meaning crop same way as what uh, Steve was doing, which is I think it's this. Like yeah, I think yeah. Basically, just taking the sum, and if it's zero, you do this. Or I think keep means like yeah, if it's great if. He takes the average. Okay, I don't know. I, okay, I'll just take the sum. But anyway, uh, you take the average along each axis and then just decide, do you want to keep it or... Uh, 
what are they is, averaging to yeah i don't know why why uh, average versus just do what uh, steve was saying which makes sense what is the averaging doing or how does that help compared to what steve was saying which is drop zeros yeah uh, yeah my my gut feeling would have been to do voxel dot sum here i don't know why he's doing mean um we, we no no not sure uh, and why would you even do sum as opposed um, to just compare to zero because of the fact you, you need to like do it along the whole row or the whole column yeah uh-huh right like oh, yeah. you yeah yeah you need to yeah if you, you because you you can drop the whole row yeah, yeah exactly drop the whole row or the whole column yeah i i don't know why it didn't work here so maybe see mm. yeah like is uh, oh yeah but yeah. you, you see the pictures at the bottom there everything, right sorry what did you say yeah. which yeah. which picture steve uh, um so you see there's three rows yeah uh, uh, are the first two rows are those axial uh, no sorry so th this is axial uh, this this is coronal and this is sagittal all right okay sorry but it's it's the same sorry, could, could you repeat meaning uh, the, the oh, first each row yeah. is different yeah each row is different yeah so uh, he he's just plotting the data so that you can um, Okay, let's see what he did. He did normalize crop. Oh, interesting. I thought it. Uh, yeah, he he's just plotting um, because once you resize it, you can you can show each plane, right? So, for example, um, okay, I really need to. I need to just code code this myself so I understand each step. Um, I just saw it this morning before we started, uh, like maybe half. Mm. Yeah. So scan yeah. type is the four types. So you would have like, for example, you know, like scan because I also called it scan type. So it resonates with me that. Uh, so when he does the, you know, for I scan type in the enumerate scan type, so that the I is just the index and scan type is just the four. So it's in the order of the four that he has stuck right. in some list up above. Right. Right. So and then. Uh, right. So for each each scan type, he's he's normalizing it. And so you you so you have this thing voxel, right? And uh, then in the from the voxel, like you can show, you know, because the voxel is this is a this is like a I, I would have okay I, I should just read it. A, this is like a three dimensional array, right? So right. So depending on how you show that voxel, so voxel, okay, this one, I'm not sure about the divide by two. Then you you see you take. Then now you show the uh, you show the second uh, dimension, and here you show the third dimension. So, and subplot, yeah. Uh, and this is just indexing for the plotting, right? Like all this. Uh, so, so same subject. Uh, data is nicely organized, and you you can see it in. Uh, and dimension one is axial, two is coronal, and three is sagittal. And now it's consistent across all the subjects, right? So all all the subjects are in the uh, are in the and same. Thank you. Is it, uh, isn't he labeling the column, uh, uh, or is that labeling of the columns just different? Because he has four labels for each of the columns. So I thought that the columns are all of the same. Um, if you go up a little bit more. To get a, yeah, the, yeah, so the, I thought these three images in the first column are yeah. all flare and all axial. Is that not the case? But you seem to be saying that no, the first row is something, second is different, third is different. Yeah, the, I, th so, I thought he was labeling column, the col I thought he was labeling the columns with what the image was originally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just, yeah. So, so the one there was like that image was its flare MRI scan was coronal. But yeah, like now he's uh, normalized it and moved it about. So the first row is all axial, even though the thing was coronal to start with. Yes. Yeah, and that, I think, yeah. Okay. Yep. Got it. So the column name is the original, and then the row is the converted value. Converted value. Right. Yeah. Okay. And so now this this is, I'm not really, uh, so he's, yeah, 
and he's just showing examples. It looks really good. He 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 did some. You remember last time we were talking that like in CT, the Hounsfield units have a biological meaning, right? Like um, whatever zero is water, right? And yep. but but MRI that is not there. So so in, so people try to do some normalization of intensities, and he he picked one method. Uh, what did he? Okay, yeah, just the thing we are used to, right? Uh, just subtract the min, uh, divide by the max, and then multiply by two fifty five, and convert it to okay. u and eight. Yeah, so that that's his. Uh, yeah, that that's a pretty reasonable uh, normalization. Oh, here I had a question, Mehul. Yeah. Is do you get any benefit? I was wondering if you because the original images could be sixteen bits, right? Then. Are yeah. you better off doing that to, instead of two fifty five multiplying by uh, whatever the sixteen bit, and then having NP dot U in sixteen? Yeah. Uh, no, I, I've seen this in the other this question come up in other competitions, and one of the answers I've heard is that okay, even if you use any uh, pre-trained models, like the pre-trained models were trained with you know like U uh, in eight, so so keep it U in eight, but maybe if we uh, train yeah that that's the uh, one yeah the, the other yeah and then a related um, a note you know like here we are doing subtract the min right so um, one thing that's come up in previous competitions is uh, okay image net uh, uh, has there, there is an image net mean you can find on the web so people will not subtract by this but they will subtract by image net mean which to me didn't make you know, I was like, yeah, this makes more sense. But I've seen people do it, do it the other way, and it, in the end, it doesn't matter too much. But we, we could try out both. Yeah, the because the min max or normalization, um, and we've had this discussion, Rekil and I too. That yeah. do you do it on your current, or do you just use image net stats? Right. Yeah. Uh-huh. For the mean and the. Uh, Standard deviation. Oh, nice. So he's he's thought about this quite well. So now, you know, so the final the final pipeline, and then during inference also we try to do the same. Is uh, I forgot. Yeah, I'll have to check what voxel is. Maybe just get it into. Uh, we can. Uh, so no, normalize first, then crop. And then resize. I okay, yeah, that's so that that's his pipeline, like to manage. Um, so this is the sequence uh, of pre-processing. So the nice thing is it will it will allow us to work only in flare if you want, or or, or sorry, only in axial or only in sagittal. Um, and I think he also uh, okay. They they he you released know- it. Sorry, go ahead. Sorry, one thought occurs to me. Again, I don't know how complicated or simple it would be. Is if you somehow, and I don't know whether it is screw up the voxel dimensions, but just a thought that you were showing this is, if it's possible to not touch the images that are already in the desired plane that you have. Ah. Uh, uh, Rather than converting everything. Everything. Yeah, that. Uh, yeah, I think that then you just yeah, you just do bookkeeping and keep keep track of it. Like, right. Because, but then I don't know whether the rest of whether they suddenly will have different something. So something to think about. I just, I was just thinking. Right. Okay, so one one thing I was just thinking when I saw his, I, I what I need to check maybe I and I'll check is so let's say. Uh, Let's say original uh, spacing is um, one and one millim. Oh, no, one millimeter. Okay, let's say it's two millimeters, right? And um, and five. And there are there are five. There are uh, how to make it easy? Okay, let's say there are hundred slices. And if we if you do any normalization, let's say we make it uh, five millimeters. So this this tells us always like that it should be um, yeah five so this will become fifty slices right 
So because you are covering okay two okay two point five into whatever so two fifty millimeters no that's that's too much area but but basically the area area remains the the space you're covering needs to remain the same when you do the normalization so otherwise it it might look squished or funny but I think all, all his images look good. So I, I think he's probably taken care of like uh, this, um, you know that, and this is just because it's a physical space, right? Like, okay, I I had I was covering two fifty millimeters, and if I if I change the voxel size, I need to make sure I'm covering the same two fifty millimeter, uh, two fifty millimeters. Yeah. That. Uh, this is nice. Yeah, he's okay. So then he's the. Uh, Normalized it as why okay he just picked sixty four in every dimension okay uh, I'll see there does he store all his images then as both numpy arrays and nifty images as well no I think he's just stored as numpy it was just uh, I'm below that a wee bit. Oh, maybe not. I thought I'd seen Nifty. But, um, yeah. If you have like a three-dimensional NumPy array, is that easy enough to convert yeah. to and from Nifty then, yeah? Uh, to and from Nifty. Uh, let, me, let me check one thing. Really Are there equivalent things like PyDICOM to read and write Nifty images? Yeah, I think so. Um, there is... Uh, Shoot, uh, no, no, no. I remember if, if I see it, I might. Uh... Oh, yeah, Nibable. Okay, yeah, that's the one, right? Yeah, this one, yeah. So, this one will uh, do uh, right to uh, back and forth. Um, and it has, yeah, it has basically all the medical imaging. Yeah, basically, what happened is, I think just a little bit of the history was like DICOM, so many slices, right? So people got sick of, especially if you're doing research. Like, so then they came up with, uh, they used to have an older format, but sometimes it was hard to track if it's like the left side or the right side of the brain. Um, and then and then NIF Nifty came up, I think, from the NIH. Um, that's, that's that's the official. And also, it's kind of interesting. It is Nifty, or sorry, if you go back, uh, my battle comes from <laughs> what I was thinking would exist, which is Pi Nifty, just like Pi Daikon. So it's yeah. just an evolution of Pi Daikon to Pi Daikon. Like, yeah. go right. to and from a whole bunch of other formats. I don't know why this go. is not. Yeah, I don't know why. Yeah, so we can use this to convert back and forth. Uh, uh, this should it should be. Got it. Yeah, they have all, all the stuff like about the, uh, but may, maybe, yeah, voxel coordinates are in voxels. Yeah, the, like some of the spacing stuff. Like, um, oh, before you drop off. I had one other question or thought to for you and yep. Steve. Uh, I thought one of the things worth doing, given the size of the data set and stuff that uh, Jeremy talks about, is creating a smaller data set that has your desired properties, if you will, so that you mm -hmm. can iterate quickly. Mm -hmm. and um, so, you know, he says, hey, build that. And then, you know, so you can kind of do a lot of experiments on that instead of running it across all five basic partitions and four, da, 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 or whatever. So, you know, what would a good subset of the data set look like is something that I was beginning to think about. And I was just wondering, I mean, even if you guys think of something right now or even offline, if you can post to slack that that'd be great you know honestly i i thought this 64 would be quite good like this six like you take everything but you take everything as 64 by 64 by 64 
uh, uh, but you, oh, you're saying, but reduce, maybe not even take all five eighty, maybe even a subset of this. Uh, yeah, yeah, just just to get your, mm -hmm. you know, um, like full pipeline and full, so that you can run a bunch of experiments on it, which would be much faster. Now, if the whole thing is fast, then that's fine. But if it takes you like you know, in another context, they will think a couple of hours so to display. But if this itself takes two hours, you know, for a final submission run, that's fine. That you may want to do once, but you may want to do five to ten experiments, five experiments a day, yeah. which you want to do on a subset of the full data set, for example. I so I was just wondering, you know, what would be a good, uh, and what would the parameter? I mean, I've just initiated the thought so I haven't even thought much myself but just something I was wondering about mm. um, yeah, I, yeah I don't have any thought. Yeah, I, I was just thinking to use the whole, uh, whole thing but a different smaller size but yeah, Steve if you mm. what do you think yeah. yeah like as you say if you use those small lower resolution ones um yeah for me i'm not sure why your thing took so long like i as i say i've only been using like basic notebooks just sort of sampling uh -huh. like sort of i don't know like a maximum of 10 slices out of like an mri um yeah but for me like the notebooks the training notebook only takes about 10 minutes at the minute and the submission oh, is oh, okay. the same. so yeah um yeah Mine are pretty that's quick, but as I showed you, my results are all also pretty rubbish. But um, obviously, as I start adding more stuff in, it'll go up. But so I haven't really thought about sort of cutting the training set down yet because of the fact I am able to iterate pr pretty quickly at the minute. Okay, I I was playing with this 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 notebook has uh, did did something like what uh, Srinivas was saying, like maybe last time or last two last time. They have like. Uh, uh, four models one for each mri type and then just do a simple ensemble uh and they uh it i i, I what i'm trying right now is just to um uh, re-implement it myself you know just to see i uh, learn so i only did one change is i changed the i changed the size i think he has a bigger size i was like i don't want like 256 um and um, this is because I, I used PyTorch before, um, like last year for something, and uh, I, I was uh, also like, okay, get back to get some PyTorch training. Uh, but the, right, right now, I so I got, I think with his notebook, he had 0.684, um, but with this, when I reduced the size, it dropped to 0.671. Um, but it's it's not, uh, yeah. It, it, you know, like like PyTorch, you have to do this data set. Um, yeah. Di, yeah. Um, and then there were some things in the trainer. Uh, it's little painful, but um, yeah. But that that's what I was asking. If this is still like a random, will, will random still get you like point six seven? Um. I, I don't know, like as I showed you before, yeah. it, it said that you should be able to get sort of 0.65 or whatever from random, okay. but um, okay. my ones that are actually using images, I'm getting about 0.5, so okay. I haven't been able to get 0.65 out of it yet. Okay. Yeah. So mine's maybe um, worse And you're random. using AUC as the, you're submitting, so you it is judging you on AUC, right? Yeah, that's right, yeah. Uh, and how about you, Mehul, when you've quoted the scores, it's the AUC score? Yeah. Uh -huh. Although, yeah what like are you they... getting on your validation? On my uh, validation, I'm getting about 0.65, but then when I submit it, I get about 0.5. Okay. I see. Because um, of what we discussed, I forget, one week, two weeks back, I would tend to trust your validation score more than your mm -hmm. uh, test score. Yeah. 
as you change because of what we talked about, that the test score might be a poor indicator of what your final test score would be. Whereas your validation score ought to track if you stick with the same metric. Because this is the other reason that I saw as I went through the discussion post that many people are saying that if you, uh, and that's a good uh, thing to notice to Steve as you run and submit is whether your some people said, oh, I'm focusing on the loss that I see, and then I pick the lower loss and submit, I get a better score. And I think that's where it gets dangerous because I think that might lead you down the wrong path. Whereas if you're using the AC score and you see a better AUC score on your validation, even though you don't see it in test, my intuition says, that that would result in a better result eventually, even if your current test scores are there. Yeah, at the minute I haven't really had a sort of a chance to sort of compare the AUC scores I'm getting with against the public scores yet, but certainly they did seem to be worse the public scores. So. And in and in this case, we what, what because it's so small, like the it's only five eighty five. Like instead of doing like a eighty twenty split, is it? Do you think it's better to do like a five fold or ten fold cross validation? Like yeah, like maybe five. Yeah, fold and was... then follow it up with a final run where you may even do uh, yeah. run it across all. Right, across all of them, right, okay. Okay, use the five-fold to pick your best parameters and then like whatever parameters, right, like training or model or whatever. And then once we pick the best, run run, run all the training subjects. Uh, through that, yeah. Yep. yeah, and then so okay. maybe what I'm thinking. I'll try and see if I can sub. Uh, I'm, I'm excited about that that normalized set. I'll, I'll try and see if I can get, I can use that data set and make a submission. Let's see. Uh, oh, the 64 by 64 thingy. Yeah, like, yeah, because he he did he did a lot of the things I would think about, like uh, like yeah, the voxel size and getting them in the orientation, image normal like cropping. Uh, there is yeah. I can uh, share that makes what... more sense because I would imagine you would learn. I can't imagine that a network can learn when your orientation varies yeah. from patient to patient and that it would easily learn what is uh, that I, much I, of a difference. I just remember that there is one binary, there is a like an open source Linux binary uh, where I actually just let me share. Um, uh, Oh, did I just share? It's called my Robax UC, Robax UCLA, right? So this guy's, it was his, uh, you know, so like the images we saw, there is there's, uh, there's brain, there's the skull and blah, blah, and uh, you, uh, so this, so this, this is a common problem in almost all of like, uh, brain MRI processing, right? Okay, I only want to look at inside the skull. So his his PhD topic was like brain extraction, but oh, it's I just uh, it's only for T one weighted. But mm. yeah, I noticed that um in the segmentation competition, like it says, like all of their images and the nifty things have been pre-processed, and it says there, yeah, they've done the skull stripping on the images which okay. sounds, a bit, yeah. sounds a bit painful yeah but, um I, I wasn't <laughs> yeah i see he says there about skull stripping as well yeah I, I wasn't sure if if those same things had been applied to the, the diacom images that we're working with no have they no. had their skull stripped or are they still got it in the images yeah they, we, we can see it, it it's uh yeah Wait, do, what do you see right now uh, do you see the I see the efficient net 3D. Okay, good. Uh, so then this one, so I'll, I'll show you this. Yeah. Uh, so here. Oh, it is. Oh, I yeah. Uh, yeah, those looked 
they did look the same to me as the uh, segmentation images I had. Yeah, so yeah, like, yeah. Didn't, didn't look as if the skull was there. Yeah, they stripped the skull. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because, <laughs> because, yeah, if, if you had... I'm glad the, they're uh, doing it on the images and not on person. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he went... Oh, man, this is so much... I'm so happy to talk about MRI with someone else. <laughs> then my wife just has to listen to me talk about it. <laughs> No, there's this super cool uh, skull stripping algorithm. She's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, my keyboard stopped working. I have to go strip some skulls. Okay, I can't get it to... Yeah, you would... Uh, it, it would be very clear. It would be like on the... Uh, oh, sorry. My sound is not... Yeah, you can see it on some of the other images, right, where they show the outline of the skull, and that's nowhere to be found in these images. Yeah, how did, did he do something? I mean, I missed it. Uh, no, 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 I don't think he's I done don't, it. I think no, he's, at a, least even. Those yeah. images look the same as the ones I've been working with. Okay. okay cool. Yeah. So even the images Steve showed of the thing never had the skull in him. Okay. Yeah, because I know you showed us like Mahil like last week or whatever pictures and it had like the eyeballs and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah uh-huh. none right. of that exists in these shirt, doesn't it? Okay, cool. Yeah, so they did. Oh, nice. Okay, so they did do some skull. Yeah, they did skull stripping. That's good. Yeah. Um, okay. okay. I have to drop off, but I'll uh, I'll, I'll post. Uh, I'll, if I find something else, I'll I'll post it on the chat and. Uh, yeah, if you want anything about the Nifty, yeah, Ny- Nybabel will convert back and forth. And uh, like, like you know, w- one idea would be PyDICOM to go from DICOM to NumPy. And then yeah. maybe Nybabel from NumPy to Ny- Nifty. Um, well, that notebook you just showed there about like uh, normalizing the voxel spaces or whatever. Yeah. If I did that on the images to get them into NumPy, then I can do that. And then take the NumPy and put them into Nifty. Yeah. And then I can uh, use them with the segmentation model because like they're all nifty. So that'd be fine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You might, uh, yeah, just the size and stuff, you might have to be careful. But yeah, I, I think yeah, that, that's a good idea. Yeah. Yep. Um, unfortunately, I'm not here for the next two weeks. I'm heading back over to Ireland. So I'm not going to be able to, to join for the next two Saturdays. So. Okay. Oh, okay. So then it'll just be. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Hey, so we'll um, keep... we had a new post to join. So, uh, so um, um, just to give you context, I think, uh, welcome. We, we are kind of using this forum to discuss this particular competition. I think I posted, uh, if you're on Slack, you'll see the background and some of the stuff that we started to do. It's an ongoing competition. I I also just jo- I joined the show itself. I was just like now only going through some EDAs and getting through what is what what we should do now. And it was today calls yeah. I was able to learn like so many things, like what and all is present. I will just explore in the following. Yeah, and I think if I remember, I do post recording so you can go back over the last two weeks. And if I haven't, I'll update it. You can go back and I think I okay, okay, sure, thanks. So, you're welcome to join us on Saturdays around this time as we move forward. So, Mehul, you are not traveling or you'll be around? Yeah, I'll be here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so we can see where at least catch up on a few things mm-hmm. and then uh, you're back the third week out, uh, Steve. Yeah, I'm back. Whatever the first Saturday is in September, I think. Okay. Oh, yeah. okay. Oh, um, that. Yeah, actually, we should check whether that's the Labor Day weekend as well. So, oh, yeah, anyway. that's. Uh... Yeah. But yeah, we can still meet that. Uh, So I have one question before I... So the segmentation idea was that 
because it's the that oh that uh, mg that the uh, marker is only inside that inside the tumor that's right yeah yeah i see okay yeah so i I wanted to use the segmentation so as I can find exactly which slices have the tumor on it and then hopefully even narrow it down even further to just get the region where the tumor is and then just create, yeah, like a, the 3D model around just the tumor. Okay, got it, got it, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Anything okay. else be better? we should discuss even if it drops off? Um, I, I don't think so. As I say, like I've just been running sort of, yeah, like to get like baseline stuff up and running and I've got like sort of weights and biases working now so as I can compare all my results and things. But Oh, nice. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, no, it's really good because it shows you exactly how your experiments are doing. And yeah, like I've been going through the, what you call it, the the AUC rock curves or whatever and getting those out so they all appear in my weights and biases tables and... could, could you show me your weights and biases setup like or could you show yeah. us your <laughs> well it's just oh, it's very simple though it's, yeah. yeah like I don't do anything um, you know other people yeah. share all their images and I think you'd, you'd showed it before um... oh, okay uh, yeah, so like mine's just this. So, yeah, so I, these are just the three experiments I've run. Uh -huh. So, I, um, so I just like put in. You can like order your columns and stuff. So at the minute, yeah, like you've got like the rock values. So as okay. you can see, I'm getting like this out. But then you can like graph them all or whatever to. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> to 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 show all the things. Um, yes, yeah, so like all of. You can stick in here like anything you want. Um, what I've done before as well with weights and biases as well, you can do parameter sweeps on it. I, I don't uh, have any at the minute, but yeah, so like, for example, I've done it before where you can use like augmentation and you can have like, I don't know, all your different types of augmentation and you just do like a big massive sweep and like let it run, um, just choosing values or whatever. And then at the end, you can sort of see what best augmentations or which ones give you the best results. And, Similarly, you can like have like ten different models. You could like try all your efficient nets and do a sweep on them. So nice. like rather than having to like run each notebook separately, you just stick it in the big loop, and then weights and biases records it all into their sweep thing, and you can compare them all. Oh wow! You can. Oh okay. Well, this is yeah. No wonder like open AI guys love weights and biases. Like you know, they they've yeah. been. Yeah, they've been pretty successful with their fundraising and they, they raised another round. And, uh, okay, this, this is really useful. Yeah, no, it, it's really good, like, but um, as I say, I, I don't use the, the complex bits of it, sort of saving mm. all the images, or you can actually save your notebooks and stuff into it. Yeah. But I haven't got around to that. Yeah, I just use it to sort of monitor my experiments to see mm. how I'm doing, so... But yeah, like that's why I want to just get like baseline ones up so we can see how things improve as we go on. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Okay, I, I have some action items <laughs> next week. <laughs> next week. Okay. okay, I see. Cool. Okay, I talk okay. to you guys next. Yeah. Bye. Cool. Yeah. So I think we are done too, right? Otherwise. It's yeah, I think so. Yeah, so. I wanted to yes, get sir. to submission by next week, hopefully. Yeah, so I'll be able to work on this all week, but I can't join for the next two Saturdays. But Yeah, no, that's fine. You can just, even if you have anything interesting to share or uh, just post it to Slack, we can yeah. and look at it there. Yep, cool. All yeah. right, well, I'll speak yeah. to you again in three weeks then. Yeah, cool. Have a good trip and see you three weeks after. Okay, cheers. Bye. See you there, guys. Bye.